All right. Since the beginning of BFO, there has been a request for an ontology of mathematics. And increasingly also there has been a request for an ontology of physics. Now, finally, we have reached a position where we can talk about progress on both of those fronts. And uh, what I'm going to be talking about today is what is promoting this progress, which is a new initiative, which didn't come from me. It came from another place, one of the IC agencies. And it's an initiative to help the OUSD answer the question of all questions, which is uh, here at the top of your screen. The, the OUSD is adopting a modular open systems approach, which is based on amongst other things, modular ontologies in the spirit of the Diog Foundry. And, I, and I'm assuming that this will be in some ways part of the Diog Foundry. Now, the modular open systems approach will deal with questions like what did we buy, what IP do we have, and so on. But it will also have to deal with other sorts of questions about the capabilities of the devices about how the capabilities measure up against adversary capabilities, about what training you need and so forth. And all of these two are possible foci for an ontology effort, more modules. So you all know about how modular ontologies work. You all know the reason why we need modular ontologies, because if we build ontologies in a one-off way, no one else will ever use them and so they will die. Now, one way in which the Obo Foundry and, and the Diog Foundry will help people like the OUSD is by using tools like the Amigo tool, which is a very um, impressive tool for converting data from repositories into a format which enables structured query. And we're working on building a portal which will enable that sort of query based also on modular ont ontologies in the area of quantum physics. I think this is the, about the third time when the Quantum Metascience Initiative has been mentioned publicly. It's a very new thing, although a lot of the basic data infrastructure and so forth already exists. The starting point is the idea that China is investing, I don't know, 10 times more per year on quantum physics than we are. And most of that money is going through the Chinese military. Here in the US, we have something like 500 companies who are trying to make quantum physics work in devices. And there are more and more devices being prototyped, but we still have a sufficiently small area that it's a reasonable idea that we might be able to capture all of it. And that's what POTUS and the DOD want to do. And that's also what the OUSD has an idea about doing within their modular approach. Sensors are the most mature area of quantum devices. And so we're going to begin with quantum sensors. So there will be two tracks, an ontology track, which will be carried out with ontology experts and also quantum experts. And anyone who has any kind of interest in what I'm talking about now should contact me because we will have a real need for quantum SMEs. Even if they come from just one company, that can be of great assistance in, uh, in filling out what we do. And then the second track will be data collection. That's where we need the real assistance. And then we can see the kinds of things that track one and track two will do. So track one will be interested in ontology development. I mentioned the new physics and mathematics ontologies, but then we have all the quantum device types and so forth. And track two will be all the instance data, which will be annotated using the ontology as it comes into the system, exactly as happened with the Obo Foundry, which solved an almost exactly analogous problem, which arose through the advance of technology when the Human Genome Project was completed and when people tried to use it for application purposes in medicine. All kinds of new equipment, all kinds of new data, and a very important need to translate data about the equipment, data about its outputs, into data that real people can understand consistently. All right, so the first step is quantum sensors. We're going to focus on that area, but anybody with an interest in any area of quantum is welcome to contact me. 
But then we'll expand the scope. So we will move from quantum sensors to sensors in general. And we've already done some work on that move. So we're going to make it bigger if it works. And we're going to move also from quantum sensors to other kinds of quantum devices. And then in the end, we conceive a situation where we will um, try to cover all devices. And um, we're hoping it will get easier as time goes by. And now for those people who are interested, I'll just give you a glimpse of how the physics ontology will work. So it will not be part of BFO. We've worked very hard to try and build a physics ontology within BFO, but it's impossible. We will also build a mathematics ontology, which will actually overlap in all kinds of ways with the physics ontology. And the, this is uh, just a, a, a global view, a, a bird's eye view of some of how the physics ontology will look. And I'm going to leave the slide here and see if there are any questions. Barry, I have a whole bunch of questions on the, this. I'm, I'm very interested in, in the, uh, the approach and especially your, your statement that um, at least some perspectives on physics are, uh, cannot fit into uh, BFO. And then you had on one of your earlier slides that the physics ont uh, ontology will include BFO. But uh, no, no. Uh, if I if I had a slide like that, then you, that was a spelling mistake. Um, okay. So let me explain um, why BFO cannot accommodate an ontology for physics. So there is a kind of naive physics, which is actually one of the original inspirations for BFO that was created by Patrick Hayes, who is now a kind of hero in the world of uh, application ontology. Uh, but we want to cover physical theory. And physical theory is not a about the real world. The simplest way of, 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 of conceiving it is that it's about mathematical models of the real world. And those mathematical models are always exact, where there is nothing exact in the real world. That's a, a, a very, very complicated claim that I just made, but that's, that's uh, one basis for the need to move outside BFO. We'll still have lots of links between BFO. So all experiments, for instance, will be covered by BFO. And, um, and then the other reason why both the physics and the mathematics ontology are not within the scope of BFO is because BFO has the rule that everything in BFO exists both at the level of types and at the level of instances. And you saw that we need both of those kinds of data for this quantum meta-science initiative. In physics, there are no instances. In mathematics, there are no instances. I'll leave you an hour to ponder that thought. And please get, whoever that was, please get in touch with me since this, this is just the kind of issue that we need to thrash out. Okay, uh, this is Dave Lutz at, at my- Oh yeah, hello Eric. Dave. Actually, yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, the, you answered almost all my questions with that one statement that the, the physics ontology is actually physics model ontology. So the abstractions, rather than an overlap of the real world yeah. uh, models. Okay, so that, so that helped I, actually, But Thank actually, you. then we do have to explore those areas where there does seem to be an overlap. So quantum sensors sense things which are in the real world. And that is a very good example why we need both the physics ontology and BFO and links right. between yeah. them. Right, and that, that's actually what I'm interested in was the uh, how do you take a model ontology and a real world ontology and they have independent existence but linkages across them and that yeah that's yeah. one thing that i've always struggled with with bfo is how are you going to wedge um uh, quantum mechanics into a real world ontology yeah so we, we we are very far along in understanding how to do that okay, and great. i will be ready to talk about that very soon